what are the most reliable cars you can buy. Well, in this video, I'm going to tell you. We've teamed up with leading aftermarket warranty provider WarrantyWise to produce a list of what they believe are the 50 most reliable models. To do this, they looked at all the cars in their books, but discounted models where there were less than 100 warranty plans to ensure a fair sample size. Also, only vehicles less than 10 years old were included. Obviously, none of the cars included in this survey had any of their manufacturer's warranty remaining. After all, you'd only buy an aftermarket warranty once the manufacturer's has run out. This left us with 200 different models of used car in the survey. WarrantyWise then analyzed their data to determine a reliability index for each car. They also recorded the age and mileage of cars when they did go wrong, the average cost per repair, and the time it took to fix them. They used that data to give each car a score out of 100. The higher the score, the more reliable the car. And now I'm gonna reveal those cars that got the top scores. I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, Car Wow. In 15th place was a Fiat 500L. It scored 78.7 out of 100. Not a bad score. Who said that Fiat's were unreliable? Anyway, the most common problem on the Fiat 500L related to its clutch. Is that anything to do with the way that the owners drive them? course not. Third party warranties don't cover damage resulting from excessive wear and tear. Anyhow, the average cost for a clutch bolt on a Fit 500L worked out to £550. However, the most expensive repair that Warranty Wise had to pay for on a Fiat 500L came to just under £1,900. Once again, that was to do with the clutch. In 14th place is the previous generation Toyota RAV4 with a score of 79.2 out of 100, so therefore marginally more reliable than the Fiat. The most common problem with that particular version of the Toyota RAV4 revolves around its fuel injectors, with the average repair cost working out to about £850. The most expensive repair relating to a Toyota RAV4 that Warranty Wise had to pay for came to over £2,000. And that was to repair the engine. Now, if you want to make sure you're kept up to date with all the latest new car news, subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. That way, you won't miss a single upload. In 13th place is the previous generation Toyota Yaris, with a score of 79.8 out of 100. This data doesn't include the latest car, nor the high-performance GR Yaris. They're both too new. Now, the most common problem with these cars is to do with their electrical systems, and on average, they cost around £800 to fix. Meanwhile, the biggest repair bill for a Toyota Yaris came to more than £3,100. That was to fix a faulty gearbox. In 12th place is the current generation of Renault Kangoo. It scored 80.1 out of 100. The most problem with these cars is to do with their wiring looms with an average cost to fix of around 580 pounds just like with the yaris though the most expensive repair was for a car's gearbox which came to 1170 pounds in 11th place are the previous two generations of Honda Civic. Together, they scored 80.7 out of 100. The most common problem with these cars was relating to the air conditioning system with an average cost to fix of £630. The most expensive Honda Civic repair that Warranty Wise had to pay for came to over £3,000. That was to fix a car's faulty fuel system. In 10th place is the Peugeot 107, which actually is no longer on sale. It scored 81.6 out of 100. Now, the most common problem with this particular car related to its electrical system with an average cost to fix it of £430. The most expensive repair for one of these cars came to more than £1,100. That hefty bill paid for a faulty clutch to be replaced. Ninth place goes to the two previous generations of Hyundai 20 with a score of 82.5 out of 100. Once again, the most common problem was to do with the electrical system. And in these versions of the Hyundai 20, the average cost to repair them was 520 pounds. The most expensive repair for one of these cheap hatchbacks came to more than four and a half times that amount. Yep, one i20 needed almost 2,400 pounds worth of repairs to its suspension components. In eighth place is the Suzuki Alto. It scored 83.9 out of 100. Once again, most common problem, electrical. The average cost of fixing the Suzuki, though, is less than the other cars previously mentioned, at £330. The most expensive repair to a Suzuki Alto was related to a problem with a car's cam belt. The cam belt controls when air and exhaust gases move through the engine, so it's pretty important. Despite that, the issue costs less than £740 to put right. Seems like it's quite a cheap car, then, in mean, more ways than one. Now, if you're thinking about getting a car and you want to compare all the different models and the savings that you can get on them, click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link in the description below to go to CarWow. If you want to do that at a later date, just simply Google Help Me Car Wow, and my team and I will help you choose the right car for you and get it for a fair price from one of our trusted dealers. In seventh place is the previous generation Kia Rio with a score of 84.9 out of 100. 
The most common fault on that car is relating to the gearbox, which came with an average cost to repair of £530. The most expensive fault to fix on a Rio was the turbocharger, which came to £1,655. In sixth place is the previous generation of Kia Seed, with a score of 85 out of 100. The most common fault on these cars relate to the suspension and wheel bearings with an average cost to fix of around £500. The most expensive repair on a Kia Seed included in the survey came to £1,900 to fix its gearbox. Next up is the two previous generation versions of the Toyota Igo, which take fifth place with a score of 85.5 out of 100. The most common fault relates to their alternators with an average cost to fix of £375. But the most expensive repair was £1,300 to fix an Igo's clutch. In fourth place is the previous generation version of the Mazda MX-5, also known as the NC, with a score of 86.5 out of 100. The most common fault on those cars is to do with their suspension, with an average cost to fix of £340. But the most expensive Mazda MX-5 repair bill that Warranty Wise had to pay for was to do with the car's air conditioning system, which cost almost £590 to fix. And now we come to the top three most reliable used cars. And in third place is the Toyota Aris. So the car that the current Corolla replaced. It scored 89.7 out of 100. The most common problem on these cars proved to be related to their gearbox, an average cost to repair of £770. The biggest repair bill was, once again, to do with an Aris's gearbox. It came to more than £1,800. If you're thinking about buying a Toyota hatchback, click on the pop-out banner or follow the link in the description below to watch my full in-depth video review of the latest Toyota Corolla. In second place is the Mazda 2, the current generation model and the previous generation, with a score of 89.9 out of 100. The most common fault is to do with the car suspension, with an average cost of repair of £320. The biggest repair bill was much pricier than that though. One car had a faulty power steering pump, which cost more than £2,400 to repair. The car was probably barely worth that much itself. Finally then, I can reveal the most reliable used car you can buy, and it is the Honda Jazz. It's the two previous generation models to be precise, and they scored an incredible 93.7 out of 100, which is quite a big jump from the second place car. The most common fault with these Honda Jazzes is to do with their central locking, £420 on average to fix. These cars aren't perfect though. The most expensive repair bill that Warranty Wise recorded for these generations of Honda Jazz related to the air conditioning system. It came to just over £970. Anyway, what do you think of this list? Are there some common themes? I can see some. Let me know if you spotted them in the comments below. Anyway, if you want to watch more videos, click on those windows there. And if you want to see how much your car is worth, if you're thinking of selling it, click on that box there to go to CarWow. Just upload some photos, give a brief description, then our dealers will bid on your car. And if you want, you can sell it to the highest offer. Dealer will come to your house, take the car away and put the money straight into your account. It's dead easy and it's completely free. Thanks for watching.